Steel is everywhere. It's in the bridges we cross, the buildings we enter, and the vehicles we drive. But have you ever wondered how it's actually made? In this video, we'll take you inside the heart of steel manufacturing, from raw iron ore to finished steel beams and sheets. Step by step, we'll uncover the extreme heat, raw power, and cutting edge machines behind one of the world's most essential materials. Stick around, the final shaping might surprise you. Number 1. Raw Materials Enter the Blast Furnace Every piece of steel begins its journey deep beneath the Earth's surface. The primary ingredient, iron ore, a mineral rich rock mined in vast open pit operations around the world. But iron alone isn't enough. To turn it into usable metal, two other substances are added, coke and limestone. Coke is a carbon-rich material produced by heating coal in the absence of air. It serves two purposes, as a fuel and as a chemical agent that helps extract the iron from its ore. Limestone, on the other hand, is a natural flux. It plays a crucial role in binding unwanted impurities during the melting process. These three materials, iron ore, coke, and limestone, are carefully measured and layered into the top of a towering structure, the blast furnace. Some of these furnaces can reach over 30 meters in height, operating continuously for years at a time. Inside the furnace, hot air is blasted in from the bottom at temperatures exceeding 1500 degrees Celsius. As the coke burns, it produces carbon monoxide, which reacts chemically with the iron ore. This reaction reduces the ore, releasing the molten iron that slowly collects at the base of the furnace. But the process doesn't just produce ore, it also generates waste. The limestone reacts with silica and other impurities, forming a molten byproduct called slag which floats on top of the heavier iron. Slag is removed separately and later repurposed in cement and road construction. The intense heat, roaring air blasts, and towering machinery create an environment that is as dangerous as it is awe-inspiring. What do you think about the work conditions for people operating these massive furnaces? Let us know in the comments. Their job is one of the toughest in modern industry. Number 2. Molten Iron to Steel Molten iron fresh from the blast furnace is heavy, hot, and far from ready. In its current state, it contains too much carbon and a variety of impurities that make it brittle and unsuitable for construction or manufacturing. To transform it into steel, strong, flexible, and reliable, the iron must undergo a second, critical refining process. This happens inside the Basic Oxygen Furnace, or BOF, a large, barrel-shaped reactor lined with heat-resistant materials. The molten iron is poured in from a blast furnace, and then a high-powered jet of pure oxygen is blown into the liquid metal at supersonic speeds. The effect is dramatic. The oxygen ignites a violent chemical reaction, burning away excess carbon and other unwanted elements. Within 20 to 40 minutes, the iron's composition changes entirely, becoming steel. The process is fast, efficient, and highly controlled with operators monitoring the temperature and carbon levels down to the decimal point. In modern steelworks, there's another method that's gaining ground. The Electric Arc Furnace, or EAF. Unlike the BOF, which relies on molten iron, the EAF primarily melts recycled scrap steel using powerful electric arcs. This method is more sustainable, more flexible, and can be switched on and off depending on demand. Both technologies have their place. BOFs are ideal for mass production from raw materials, while EAFs support a circular economy by reusing existing metal. What comes out of these furnaces is liquid steel, glowing, clean, and ready for the next step. But keep in mind, this stage is also one of the most dangerous. Temperatures exceed 1600 degrees Celsius, and the reactions are explosive if not precisely managed. If this transformation from raw iron to refined steel impressed you, consider liking the video. It helps us bring more stories from the heart of the industry. Number 3. Casting – Steel Takes Shape Once the molten steel leaves the furnace, it's a shimmering liquid mass, over 1600 degrees Celsius hot, dangerously fluid, and full of potential. But steel, in its final form, needs structure, shape, solidity. This is where casting comes in. The glowing steel is carefully transferred into a tundish, a vessel that regulates flow and ensures a consistent pour. From there, it enters the continuous casting machine, a modern innovation that revolutionized the steel industry. Instead of cooling the steel in static molds, the molten metal flows downward through a water-cooled copper mold, 
which begins to solidify the outer shell of the steel. Below that, powerful rollers guide the strand as it exits the mold. Still glowing inside but hardening on the surface, this technique allows for non-stop casting, producing semi-finished shapes in a matter of minutes. The steel is cast into one of three main forms. Slabs, wide and flat, ideal for rolling into coils, plates, or sheet metal. Blooms, thicker and narrower, used for rails, beams, or heavy sections. Billets, square or round, perfect for wires, rods, or rebar. Each form has its purpose, and each demands precision. Even the cooling rate is critical. Too fast and the steel cracks, too slow and it loses strength. It's a balancing act between temperature, flow rate, and timing, and it's performed by teams of skilled operators and high-tech sensors. As the steel strands emerge, red hot and solid, they're cut by gas torches or mechanical shears, then left to cool naturally or enter controlled cooling tunnels, dependent on the grade and use. Which of these forms do you think is used most in modern construction? Slabs, blooms, or billets? Drop your guess in the comments, and let's see who's right. Number 4. Rolling Final shaping of steel. The steel has been cast. It's solid, but far from finished. What now exists are rough, massive forms. Slabs, blooms, or billets. Raw in shape, heavy in purpose. To turn them into usable products, they must be rolled. This is where steel meets force. At the rolling mill, semi-finished steel is first reheated to make it malleable again, often up to 1200 degrees Celsius. From here, it enters a series of powerful machines that use heavy-duty rollers to press and shape the metal with extreme force. There are two main types of rolling processes. Hot rolling. The heated steel is passed through massive rollers, reducing its thickness or changing its profile. Hot rolling is ideal for creating beams, large plates, rails, and rebar. The heat makes the steel easier to manipulate, though the surface may be rougher. Cold rolling. After cooling, the steel is rolled again at or near room temperature. This process increases strength, ensures tighter tolerances, and gives the final product a smoother finish. Cold rolled steel is often used for precision parts, appliances, and cars. As the steel moves through the mill, it's constantly monitored. Computer-controlled systems measure width, thickness, temperature, and speed, adjusting in real time. Rolling is more than brute force, it's engineering precision repeated thousands of times per hour. Depending on the form, the steel may be shaped into I-beams and H-beams for structural frameworks, flat sheets for roofing and cars, long bars for rods for reinforcement or machinery, or rolled coils, stored and transported like industrial scrolls. It's a hypnotic process, glowing orange steel, flattened and stretched, twisted and coiled, under machines that weigh hundreds of tons. What do you think is harder to produce? razor-thin steel sheets, or 20-meter support beams? Let us know your thoughts below. It's not as obvious as it seems. Number 5. Finishing and Shipment After the steel has been cast and rolled into its desired form, it enters the final phase of its journey. Finishing and Shipment While the heavy work may seem done, this step is just as critical. It's here that steel gains the characteristics and qualities needed for its specific use. Strength, durability, corrosion resistance, and precision dimensions. Surface Treatment and Inspection First, the freshly rolled steel undergoes surface treatments. Depending on the intended use, it may be Pickled, where acid solutions remove surface scale and oxide layers. Oiled, to protect the surface from corrosion during storage or transport. Galvanized, coated with a thin layer of zinc to make it resistant to rust. Coated or painted, for aesthetic or specialized industrial purposes. Modern finishing lines are fully automated with laser-guided inspection systems that scan the surface for defects, scratches, cracks, or inconsistencies. Any deviation from specifications can mean rejection or reprocessing. Even microscopic flaws matter, especially when the steel is destined for aerospace, automotive, or medical industries. Quality control teams use ultrasound, x-ray, and magnetic testing to ensure integrity before it ever leaves the facility. Cutting and custom sizing Next, the steel is cut to size. Large coils are unrolled and trimmed. Bars are sectioned, and sheets are stacked into precise bundles. Cutting can be done via shearing for straight, clean cuts, plasma or laser cutting for complex shapes, water jet cutting where heat could damage the material, 
These processes are tailored to customer needs. A manufacturer might order coils 1,000 meters long, while a bridge construction team needs beams cut exactly to support span requirements. Bundling and Labeling Once cut, products are bundled, strapped, and labeled with barcodes and traceability tags. Each piece can be traced back to the exact batch, shift, and even furnace it came from. This transparency is essential for safety-critical industries like construction and transport. Heavy-duty packaging protects the steel during long-distance transport, by truck, rail, or cargo ship. The bundles are often wrapped in moisture-proof film, and steel coils are equipped with edge protection to prevent damage in transit. Logistics and Global Shipping From here, the steel begins its next journey, out into the world. Some shipments travel just a few kilometers to local manufacturers. Others are loaded into freight trains or ships, heading across oceans to massive construction projects in cities like New York, Dubai, or Shanghai. Steel is one of the world's most traded industrial goods. Its journey from raw iron ore to finished beam might have started in Australia, then processed in Germany, rolled in Korea, and installed on a bridge in Canada. It's a truly global product, with supply chains spanning continents. Despite its size and strength, timing is critical. Construction companies run on tight schedules, car factories on precision workflows. A delay in steel delivery can halt an entire operation. That's why modern steel workers work with just-in-time logistics, using real-time tracking, satellite coordination, and automated warehousing. The end of one journey, the start of another. Once delivered, the steel is unloaded, unwrapped, and set to work. Beams are hoisted by cranes. Sheets are pressed into car doors. Rods become the unseen skeletons of skyscrapers. And what began as ancient minerals hidden deep within the earth has now become part of the modern world, stronger, cleaner, and more essential than ever. Would you have ever imagined how many steps, machines, and people are involved before steel even reaches a building site? Drop your thoughts below and let's appreciate the precision behind the power. From raw rock to refined strength, the journey of steel is nothing short of remarkable. Which part of the process fascinated you the most? The roaring blast furnace? The rolling mills? Let us know in the comments, and if you enjoyed this deep dive, consider subscribing for more stories forged in fire and precision.